back to another episode of The Biggest Transformation, where lives are changed. <laughs> These eight people we have been journeying with for the past 11 weeks. Can you believe it? Today is the mark of 11 weeks that they have been fighting for their health, that they have been fighting to reach their health goal, whatever that looks like. Because really, our health goal and our weight loss goal looks a little bit different to everybody. So some of their goals is just to be healthy. Some of them is to kick diabetes. Some of them is to kick sleep apnea. Some of their goal is just to be able to feel comfortable and confident in their own skin. And today, uh, we are really embarking on the last week of their 12-week journey inside of this competition. And so we're about to jump on with the cast, see how they're doing. And, you know, people do one of two things when we get into crunch time, which is really what we're getting into. We're getting into the home stretch, the final stretch, crunch time. And so uh, let's jump on and see how they did in the crunch time. our last like official weigh-in day of competition the next time we weigh in we will be crowning a winner ah! like how is this possible i don't know maybe you guys are like it is time but for me it seems like it has like blown by anyway we are wrapping up the week the 11th week and so let's go get our way in done and danielle One eighty eight point two, Miss Cindy. Perfect, thank you, Missy. One ninety nine point one. Now, one ninety nine point one, Wonderland. Yay, good job, Missy. Laura. 207.8. Two. Two forty four point five. Two forty four point five. Five point five pounds last week. Good job. What's up, Jen? It's your turn. One six zero. One six. Oh, so close. <laughs> what? Mary Star. One fifty three point three. Yes, you're up, Miss Debbie. DK, come on, DK. 187.3. We have a leaderboard. <sighs> In first place, still holding down the first place spot with 57.5 pounds lost. 19.08% the Matthew. Awesome job, brother. Oh, so proud of you. You've been so consistent. Good job. Second place, moving up to second place, our brand new mama, 45.3 pounds lost, 18.5%. Danielle, good job, girl. Third place, with 38.3 pounds lost, 16.9%. Debbie. Good job, Debbie. In fourth place with 25.2 pounds lost, 13.3% Mary Star. Good job, Mary Star. Fifth place with 35.4 pounds lost, 12.9%. We have Laura. I feel like an announcer. <laughs> In sixth place with 33.4 pounds lost, 11.8% Missy. Right behind her, less than a percent away, with 22.6 pounds lost, 11.01%, we have Jen. And in eighth place, with 30.6 pounds lost, 7.89%, we have Cindy. For a grand total this week of 26.6 pounds this week, bringing our grand total to 279.3 pounds lost. The eight of you have lost in the past 11 weeks. Awesome job. Like Matthew, dude, you've lost 19%. 
You've lost like one fifth of yourself. You've lost a leg. <laughs> That's crazy to think about. Like when you guys look at that, you know, even uh, we look at Jen, 11%, 10% of your body mass is completely gone. 279 pounds total in the past 11 weeks. So proud of you. Awesome job, guys. So here's my, I want to start with you guys this week. I want to, um, I want to chit chat with you first. So your question for this week is how are you going to finish? And what are you going to focus on this week? To make sure that you finish strong. So Danielle, you are at first mama. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to finish strong first of all, and I am pushing it. Um, I already started this last week by upping my water to a gallon and a half. And so that's one thing I'm going to keep doing is a gallon and a half or maybe a bit more since I can't really do the hard workouts then I have to kind of do other ways. Um, and then up my walking, I've been doing about 25 minutes to half an hour a day. And I'm going to really try and do at least 45 minutes to an hour a day um, just to get things going. Awesome. And you gave birth how many weeks ago? Uh, less than two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Oh my goodness. Awesome job. Awesome. Job. And um, how many cheats are you going to have this week? None. <laughs> You're not going to have any unplanned cheats? Come on. Matthew is so hoping that you do. No, no. Okay, Cindy. Water, water, water. Need to drink my water. Um, specifically. Specifically? Yeah. Um. I, last week was horrible. So this week, um, I mean, even my feet were swelling at night. I don't know what it was going on, but I'm going to make sure that my water's in. I'm going to make sure my containers are correct. Um, and depending on how the week goes, since my work's been so busy, I'm going to try and get two workouts in, but, um, yeah, I, I, I'm going to get this week, really going to push it this week. Yep. How many cheats you going to have this week? None. How well, many yeah, none. As long as I get all my water in. <laughs> How many unplanned things are going to be going in that mouth? None. None. I love none. it. Well, listen, part of success is making the declaration ahead of time that failure is not an option. That really is part of it. Making your mind up before you even go into it, that here's what I'm going to do. Yeah. When you, when you say out loud, what you're going to do, your brain starts figuring out how to make that happen, how to help you do that. And so <laughs> I love it. Nothing unplanned in that mouth. <laughs> say hi. Hi. Um, I went and finished strong this week. I already have my meals prepped and ready to go. And, um, there, I also have my meals already packed and labeled. So that's part of what's going to be going on. I have already upped my water because you guys know I'm a water guzzler. So I'm almost to two gallons. Um, so wow. I plan on doing that and, uh, walking more this week. Awesome. And, uh, how many cheats are you going to have this week? None. So no unplanned peanut butter, pretzels, you know, chocolate chips, dark chocolate chips going in the mouth? Mm, no, after I did that peanut butter challenge, I don't think I've had peanut butter since. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yay! All right, Laura. Uh, one thing that I am going to do to finish strong is stay out of my head this week. Um, going to grow my vision. I feel like if, uh, 
after listening uh, to your live yesterday, I was, I was thinking about that. It was like, my vision shouldn't be the same today as it was 11 weeks ago. It should be more, it should be stronger. And, and, uh, and that's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, um, yeah, start out better or finish better than how I started. And I'm going to maybe add some extra workouts, add some more walking, get some more, uh, water in prioritizing my food. So I get everything in all the time. So that is how I am going to finish strong. Nice. Nice. And how many, how many unplanned cheats you have in this week? Zero. Are you sure? I promise. Okay, Matthew. All right. I'm thinking to go old school. So three days of nervous binging followed by nothing but water and laxatives for no. <laughs> Pretty sure I'd get kicked out. Um <clears throat> No, for the most part, I'm looking at staying the course. I'm trying to set my head up. This is, uh, while it's you know coming to the end of the show, obviously we have another 12 weeks of the lifestyle phase. And even beyond that, I think my actual goal, I'll reach that even after that time at this pace or near the end of that time. Uh, so I'm trying to do the, the longer vision. Uh, you know, this isn't the end. It's, it's not just the beginning, but it's just the next step. Um, that said, I am in it to win it. And especially those last few weeks, it's been a little close for comfort, usually within a percent or less. So I've earned a cheat this week. I won't be taking it, certainly not before weigh in at least. Um, beyond that, staying diligent, probably, yeah, if I'm honest, I'll probably overthink it and add a few extra workouts, but that's okay. I could stand to do that. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it uh, for the next week and going forward. So you're going to have uh, like three unplanned sheets? Well, you know, as satisfying as it is to be looking at a single digit number on my board every day when I was like over 40. Uh, no, I'm good. I'm real good. Um, <laughs> none of that. Uh, That's awesome. And awesome. So no unplanned sheets is on the plan. Absolutely. No unplanned sheets. Awesome. Good job. Buttons, you know, Jen. Hi. Uh, I am going to hit my water every day this week. And I don't know what my consequence is going to be, but I'm going to set up a consequence for myself that I will not like. Because it's spanking my butt. So I haven't been getting it in every day. So I'm going to do it this week, every day, seven days straight. Every day you hit it. Uh, Kara gets to walk in your closet and pick out a pair of shoes that you have to donate to the women's shelter. The prettiest pair. Oh, I won't have any shoes left. <laughs> You'll have flip flops. <laughs> well, that depends on how serious you are about yeah. it. Well, if you're serious, I was about thinking it. about 20 burpees a day, but yeah, that works too. <laughs> oh, because 20 burpees would really hurt you. Uh, they're not my favorite. Yeah. I mean, I hadn't, I hadn't figured it out. I it's been in the last five minutes of thinking. So do you want to hit your water? Yes, I do. Then it better be something that there ain't no way is going to happen. Okay. Otherwise, it, it, if it's something that you wouldn't rather rip your arm off and beat yourself with, <laughs> it, see, cause if you're serious about your goal, the consequence, the takeaway doesn't matter. Sure. It's just accountability. Okay. And it better be some big accountability if you haven't been doing it and all of a sudden you're going to do it. It has to be like, oh, heck to the no. Like, <laughs> think about that goal and you start chugging. Fair enough. And I feel like Cara going in and pick, pick out the prettiest pair of mommy mm -hmm. shoes. And then you get to go give them to the women's homeless shelter. Yep. Would do it. That would. You can yes. wear your flip flops to work every day. I'm sure Luke would not mind. Mary Star. Hey, so I'm all about strategy. And so I've recognized some things that work through these. Weeks. So this is uh, uh, my thing. I agree with Danielle. I think when I've been doing a gallon plus a gallon and a quarter, a gallon and a half, I lose more weight. So I'm, I'm going to shoot for what I know I can do a gallon and a quarter every day. Um, I also noticed these weeks I've been 
losing more is when I add in more like that extra workout at least three times a week. So I'm going to do 180 minutes on top of my workouts, like about three sweat sessions, I guess. Um, I'm going to stick with the time nutrition, which keeps the carbs and the uh, fruit in the morning. And um, I, I know a couple of those days I'm going to carb cycle just to keep my mind on track, meaning I'll take out at least one or two of the carbs. Um, I'm going to do, oh, I'm going to go swimming. They have a nice swimming pool too. And I'm going to do good self-care. Um, I get a massage Tuesday. I'm going to buy some Epsom salts and, and, uh, take a couple of baths and do swimming so that I can stay on top of the soreness and keep going. And that's my plan. And I'm going to lose 1.5 pounds or more this week. Nice. I love your very exact calculated strategic plan. Nothing becomes dynamic until it becomes specific. That's right. And Mary Star knows that. I love it. I love how you put a lot of thought into that. That's awesome. And Miss DK, I'm coming to you. Okay. Well, I could just ditto Mary Stars, but <laughs> how do you go after that? <laughs> nice, Mary. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm like Laura. I'm going to get out of my head because I do know that I struggle with the, I'm going on a vacation. And so I have to get out of my head and think, you know, thinking, oh my gosh, I'm nervous. I got to eat because I relate the excitement with hunger for some reason. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, let's see. I am going to increase my water because that does help a lot. I've been doing a gallon and a half this week and that helps. Um, I do my carbs in the morning, so I'm going to continue to do that. And uh, I am going to add three extra workouts. Maybe not three 60-minute extra workouts. <laughs> I'm thinking 180 minutes. Oh, gee, that's a 60. No, probably three 30-minute really hard workouts. Is that okay, Mary? <laughs> Um, and, uh, I am not going to cheat. I'm not going to lick my fingers. I'm not going to have anything extra over. I'm going to be a good girl. Like I have been doing for the last week, two weeks. So that's it. So awesome. How many unplanned cheats are you going to have? Absolutely none. So no little nibbles, no little no. sneaky sneaks. No, none, no none, stress none. eating. No stress eating. Ugh. No, no emotional, I'm frazzled eating. No, no, none. Sure. I am past that. Yes, you are. Good job. <laughs> Good job. I love it. Good job. <sighs> oh, yes. And amen. You are past that. Shoot. Uh, yeah. Awesome job. Listen, life and death is in the power of our tongues. And that is such a true statement. And so many times we sit here on the sideline, not wanting to make these, here's what I'm going to do. And here's what I'm going to, but speaking, what you're going to do is vision casting, vision casting. It doesn't mean you're always going to it doesn't mean you're never going to fall short, but if you fall short, all you do is go back, you analyze, you adjust, and then you keep going. That setback prepared you to actually hit the goal this next time. And, you know, one of the, one of the first ways I learned that was through watching successful people, watching people in all areas of life that are successful and hearing how they speak. They don't speak in the past. They speak to the future. They speak to what they're going to do. They speak to what lies ahead of them. They learn from the past, but they don't hang on to it. 
you know, I, um, I'm into, I'm into sports. I be, you know, and I don't typically do anything halfway. So when I get into something, like I kind of go all in type of thing. Uh, and you know, right now, the thing that I'm kind of into have been for the past several years is martial arts. I think it's kind of a cool thing, but like any athlete, one of the things when you hear interviews with the athletes is they're speaking about what they're going to do. They're speaking about what they're going to accomplish at the beginning of the season. Is any team like, Oh, we're going to suck this year. We're going to be the worst team of the year. We're going to really, you know, we're going to stink it up. No, every team starts off saying what we're going to be in the NBA finals. We're going to bring home the trophy. That's why they train. That's why they do two a days. That's why they practice to be the best, to be the best. And sometimes in our society, you know, being the best has gotten a really bad rap. So much so that we kind of shy away from it. And what what the best I'm talking about, really truly being the best, isn't about competing with anybody else. Being the best is about competing with yourself. It's about you becoming the very best version of yourself. It's about you not settling for a lesser version of what you can be. And I don't know about you guys, but I settled for a very long time. I settled for a lesser version of what was in my heart. And there was nothing wrong with Fluffy Carmen. She wasn't a bad person. She was a great person. She had a big heart. She had a big butt. (laughs) But she had a big heart. And she did a lot of good things. So wanting to become a better version doesn't mean the old version was a bad version. But it wasn't your best version. That's the truth. She wasn't taken care of. She certainly wasn't a priority. She certainly didn't have habits that are going to keep her around for a long time. Listen, you can go out and buy a brand new Tesla today, right? But if you don't take care of that Tesla, how long? If someone has, if okay, if Cindy buys a Tesla and Debbie buys a Tesla and Cindy takes care of hers and she does the proper maintenance and she puts the proper gas in it and she does the proper repairs when they need to be done and all everything's kept up, but Debbie gets hers and she kind of just does it when she thinks about it. Oil changes, maybe once a year maintenance. Well, I'll put that off next month, next year until the car breaks down. And then who's Tesla is going to run better longer. Who's is going to last longer. Who's is going to perform better. The one that has the maintenance done, the one that's taken care of. They both started off, they're both amazing cars, but one's going to stay on the road longer. And it's the same thing with us. Some of us are going to last longer. Some of us are going to run the race faster and better based on if we get them. And so as we come into this week 11, it's not about competing with each other. I know this is a competition, but this is really about you competing with your last best. It's about you going all in and leaving nothing on the table. Finishing strong, which is a habit most of this world does not have. (laughs) Most of the world is great at starting. Why? Because it's exciting when you start, right? Like you don't have to even manufacture excitement. Excitement is natural when something's new. Over time, when the newness wears off, so many of us let excitement also wear off. This week, it's not about you naturally having excitement. It's about you manufacturing that sucker. It's like a manufacturing plant. So a a manufacturing plant that manufactures brake pads, what do they do? They make brake pads. Do they pray that God's going to drop some brake pads out of the sky? No. So it's not about praying for excitement. 
It's about you making a choice that you're going to be excited and you're going to finish strong. How do I stay excited about my health seven years into this, seven and a half years into this? How do I stay excited about my workouts? How do I stay excited about a brand new flavor? Cookies and creamy. <laughs> Does that come natural? I just wake up and I'm like, oh yes, Lord, ha, huh? woo! Spirit fingers. That just happened naturally. Was I just naturally this super duper motivated person? Some of you guys are like, I think maybe. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you are. If it helps at all, I've called to wake her up in the morning and she's not that way in the morning every day. <laughs> Jen is ruined with me where I'm like, shh, shh, don't talk yet. <laughs> it is a choice. Excitement and enthusiasm is a choice. Okay, so get excited about yourself. Get excited about your health. Get excited about the possibility of what, what, can, what can become of your hard work. Don't come into this week expecting everything to go perfect. Expecting life not to put stress on you because that's what life does. Life throws lemons and life brings stress. We choose whether we pick it up or not. We choose whether, see, life brings stress, but we choose whether we're stressed. Life brings situations. We choose whether we overcome or we get overcome. Life brings emotions. We choose whether we are emotional about it. Do you know you know, there's something I like to remind myself of a lot of time whenever a problem comes into my life. And I always remind myself who knitted me together. And that before any problem came, before any problem came into my life, do you know what I have? Before the problem even came, I have the solution. I have the solution. Before any problem can enter my world, I already have the solution inside of me. And I know that. There was a time when I didn't. And there was a time where I would let problems stress me out and make me eat emotionally and get snippy with my spouse because of all these problems and all this stress and all this stuff. So I say all that to say, this week, you're not looking for perfection. You're not looking for a week with no problems. That's like waiting for the sun, the moon, and the stars to all. Has anybody ever had a week where no problems arose? I, I know if you're a parent, don't even think about raising your hand. <laughs> Has anybody ever had a perfect week where there was no problems at all? Just check me. If anybody, no, we all live on planet Earth. Okay, that's what I thought. We all live on planet earth with other people. If I had my own planet with no people, that maybe could happen. I think that if that would be a great vacation destiny, the destination. Anybody else want to go to your own island with anybody else around? Anybody else with that sound glorious? Your own lounge chair with your own cooler and nobody else there? Some of you guys are like, no, I'd be so bored. <laughs> um, so this week, you're not waiting for perfection. Any problems arise, just as in the solution's already in me, guess what's already in you? The solution's already in you. Don't focus on the problem. If you focus on the problem, you can't. You know, when you focus on the problem, it actually keeps you from seeing the solution. Because you can only see what you're focused on. And if you're focused on the problem, you're too busy looking at the problem to ever look at the solution. And don't make up problems for our gosh sakes. We have enough problems in our life. Listen, if you travel on Thursday, don't you be making up crap about it. Today's, we're days away from there. Don't you be making up crap that could happen when we're days away. 
Don't create stress. If something happens when you're traveling, guess what? When should you deal with that? Right then. When it happens. You don't need to make a plan for something that's not even good, that may not even happen. If something, if, if, if a lemon comes and pelts you, well, you freaking pick it up and pelt it back. And so this week, it's our last week of the competition phase. And when we get to Sunday, when we get to next week, no matter what place you land in on the leaderboard, it's about you looking in the mirror and being proud of how you finished. It's about you looking in the mirror and saying, I finished strong. I left nothing on the table. It's about you being proud of the effort you put in and proud of how you finished. Because your best, no matter what place you've fallen on the leaderboard, your best will always be good enough. Always. I don't care if there's a first next to it, a fourth, a sixth, or an eighth. As long as you finish strong and you give it your best, then that is good enough. You guys, you know, I look at this. I look at how much weight you've lost. In the past 11 weeks, I look at this. I look at how far you've come. I look at the the tools that you've gained inside of your toolbox. And whether you guys know it or not, I am so proud of you. Because after this, yes, we have another 12 weeks together. But you guys are making real changes. Like real, not just like, you know, cute changes that come and go. Like re we are tackling real things in your life. We are actually changing your habits. We're changing your thoughts. How many of you guys would say you've had some habits changed over the past uh, 11 weeks? Anybody has some habits changed? How many of you guys are noticing, even when it comes to your health or your food, how many of you guys have had areas of your life where even you're not only acting different, but how many of you guys are starting to think different on different things? Like you're having different thoughts about things. How many of you guys, your vision is bigger today? Your vision of your health is bigger today than it was 11 weeks ago. How many of you guys, your butt is smaller? <laughs> Checking. So what you're doing is working. Keep going. Finish strong. 279.3 pounds lost in 11 weeks. <laughs> I need like, you know, those party favors where you just, whoop, you blow on the thing. Anyway, absolutely incredible. And like, we are coming into the very last week of season two, the very last week of season two. And if you haven't heard, there is going to be a season three and we are just making our final decisions on the applicants for that season. But I could not be more excited for this, for the cast of season two to see all they've accomplished and that this is just the beginning. I mean, give me a break. Matthew losing 57.5 pounds. We have Danielle making her way up to second place, 45.3 pounds. So hopefully you have been inspired by watching them. And next week, we will be back for the season finale where we will get their final weigh in. We will see who ends up taking home the prize of winner of the biggest transformation season two. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. And we will see you next week, right back here, same time, same place for the season finale, the biggest transformation season two. Bye. <laughs>